bomb impact launch is hands down one of the most thrilling things you can do in Breath of the Wild. So if you want to know how to become a human cannonball, you've come to the right place. This is IGN's step-by-step -step guide. But first, what is this technique and who pioneered it? Amazingly, given Breath of the Wild is three and a half years old, the bomb impact launch really only swam into the consciousness of the player base on September 6, 2019, after these videos from Twitter user at SatoGashi020 were posted online. The Breath of the Wild community immediately knew that they revealed something special and set about exploring and refining what they saw. Before long, people had worked out multiple techniques for executing these launches. Not to mention realizing that they could also be chained together in the air. A bomb impact launch, or wind bomb as it's also known, is done by dropping your remote bombs behind you, one after the other while in bullet time then detonating the first to catapult the second directly into Link, rocketing him away at speed. It can be done anywhere that you can enter slow-mo by tapping ZR, the right trigger, which means you can use ledges, tree stumps, cryonus blocks, and more. You can even bomb impact launch off cliffs or trees. It's a super fun movement ability, and this video will take you through several ways to do it. Before we get started, however, a big thanks to everyone who has posted information about this technique, as there are a lot of little quirks to be aware of. Particular thanks to Limcube and Linker7, who both published long and invaluable tutorial videos, the links are in the description, pointing out some crucial things that impact the consistency of the launch. For instance, your launches will be more reliable if you're facing in one of the cardinal directions, north, south, east, or west. This is because the cube bomb always drops oriented to those directions, not the direction Link is facing. And since that's the bomb that's slamming into him, it's more likely to strike him sweetly if it hits him flush. Some expert players also say that aiming northeast, southeast, southwest, and northwest are okay too, as he gets hit cleanly by the bomb's corner. Angles slightly off all of those are the most problematic, and will often result in launches that aren't as clean or that don't work. You can fine-tune where you're aiming by holding down R, the right bumper, and using the minimap. Just be sure to use the Master Sword or sheath your weapon to avoid throwing it. Whenever possible, try and ensure you're facing in one of those core directions. Your launches will be better as a result. Lag is also something to be aware of. If there's too much going on on screen, you can get the bomb impact launch right and start being shot forward, only for it to be interrupted, stopping you dead in mid-air and resulting in you dropping to the ground. This is called a lag stop, and some areas are much worse than others for this. The Korok Forest, for instance, is famously laggy. Anywhere with a lot of water, malice, or trees can also be more problematic than other locations. But it doesn't mean it can't be done, just that it will be less consistent for you. Potential lag can be minimized by looking down at the ground or up at the sky while launching, or by launching off a wall, as that already covers a lot of the screen. The game will struggle to keep up with what you're doing, however, so expect some pretty long pauses while it thinks about how badly you're messing with its physics. There are a few ways to execute this technique, but for this video we're going to go over three. The first is ledge bombing. Find yourself a good spot with a definitive drop that lets you face one of the cardinal directions. In the early game, for instance, you could try launching north off the walls of the Great Plateau, or west from the cliff next to the Hetenyu Ancient Tech Lab. You need to have the spherical remote bomb selected and a bow equipped, and it's probably best to save the game so you can reload for every fresh attempt. Get into position, hold down ZL, the left trigger, and keep it held down. You only release it once you're in slow-mo, then find your angle with R. This way of doing the bomb impact launch is all about timing, but there are actually a few different timings that can work. My preferred method is as follows. I jump forward and immediately press L, the left bumper, to drop the spherical bomb at Link's feet, then quickly tap ZR to draw my bow and enter slow-mo. I then immediately press and hold up on the D-pad so I can select the cube bomb, release up and press L to drop it, 
immediately press up again, go back to the spherical bomb and detonate it straight away with L. Let's run it again in real time. What I like about this technique is it's really about the rhythm of that initial jump. If you get that jump, drop bomb, bullet time sequence right, then there's no other timing required as you're dropping the second bomb straight away, then detonating the first straight away too. The timing of when you drop the first bomb will determine what kind of launch you get. If you drop it super early so that it's well behind Link and below his feet, basically on the ground at the point from which you launched, by the time you're mid-jump and in slow-mo, you'll get a nice high launch. If you drop it later so the first bomb is higher behind him, the launch will be lower. One thing to be aware of is to really try and train yourself to only tap ZR. If you press it instead and Link actually fires an arrow, it's less likely to work. It can still work, but it's not what you want. Also bear in mind that you're not actually blowing up the cube bomb, so if you try and do another bomb impact launch too close to the last one, you may simply detonate the old cube bomb instead of dropping a new one. You can check by switching to the cube bomb and seeing if there's a detonate option before attempting another launch. I mentioned there were other options for timing, so let's quickly discuss those. For a while I was actually jumping forward then pressing L and ZR simultaneously. This left the bomb higher up behind Link as opposed to below his feet, and because I was dropping it later it meant I had to wait before dropping the cube to space them out. I typically wait for around a third of one ring of Link's stamina wheel before dropping the cube. I then had to wait for the bombs to line up with Link's back. Obviously this technique uses up more stamina and it also had me panning to the side to ensure I got the angles right. It can work just fine and can also result in a good amount of speed, but I just love how cut and dry the other method is. I should also mention that when I was first trying to teach myself how to bomb impact launch off ledges, I was actually starting with the camera side on so I could see from the beginning where the bombs were sitting. Again, this can totally work as it's largely in the rhythm of the button presses, but at the same time it's easier to stray from the cardinal line which can mess your launch up. Maintaining your aim by holding ZL and launching with the camera behind Link is far superior. And once you start to get a feel for this method, you can experiment with different timings to see what works best for you. So that's how I bomb impact launch from the ground, but what about while climbing? This technique is super fun to do. Let's go through it step by step. Position yourself on a wall, again with the spherical remote bomb selected and a bow equipped. Then move the left stick down as if you're climbing down and press jump. Link will leap out away from the wall. The key here is timing. As soon as you jump, press L to drop the first bomb, then immediately tap ZR to enter bullet time and hold up on the D-pad. Switch to the cube bomb and drop it immediately by releasing up and tapping L, then hold up again to switch back to the spherical bomb and immediately detonate it. If the timing works, Link will look like he's been shot out of a cannon. What I like about this method is that it's like the ledge launch in the sense that it's all about the initial timing of the button presses as you jump, and if you get that right, you don't need to check the angles of the bombs or delay subsequent inputs. You'll know you're in a good rhythm if you're dropping the spherical bomb so that it's basically against the wall where Link's feet were when you jumped off it. There are other ways to do this launch. If you're more interested in shooting Link away at speed, for instance, you can try jumping away from the wall and tapping ZR to enter bullet time first, then dropping the spherical bomb. Turn the camera to the side and wait a second or two before dropping the cube, then wait for them to line up with Link's back before triggering the spherical bomb. The timing on wall bombs can be quite generous too. I mean, my first tap of L to release a cube bomb didn't register in this attempt, but I was still able to make it work. And in this one, I went into bullet time way too late. The main thing is to practice and you'll find a rhythm that works for you. The final piece of the puzzle is the mid-air bomb impact launch. Unsurprisingly, there are a few ways you can do this, but I use two techniques, one to get height and one to get forward momentum. For both it's best for Link to be moving at his normal paragliding speed, so if you're paragliding after a bomb impact launch, you need to wait until you return to regular speed. Or you can reset your speed by retracting then redeploying your paraglider, or by aiming with your bow, which also lets you find a cardinal direction. Either way, you're now ready to wind bomb from the air. For the first method, you'll keep the camera behind Link. 
Like so many of these, it's all about feeling out the timing, but the basic idea is you stop pushing forward on the left analog stick, then drop the bomb a beat later as Link's momentum drops. Watch closely and you can see how Link's legs move forward when I let go of the analog stick. I basically let go, wait half a second, then drop the spherical bomb. You then want to wait a beat again before triggering bullet time. The spherical bomb should be just off the bottom of the screen, but you can still see its trail. Immediately press up on the D-pad and switch to the cube bomb, release and deploy it, then detonate the first. Get it right and the bombs will be steeply angled up towards Link and you should get a whole lot of height. It takes some time to get the rhythm of this one, but like other techniques, there's some room to move. If you enter bullet time too soon, so the spherical bomb is still on screen, you can move the camera to side on when you drop the next bomb, then line them up before detonation. If you enter bullet time too late on the other hand, well, you should just try again. The second technique is great when you want to cover a lot of ground. For this one I move the camera so it's side on. Again, you want to be going at Link's standard paragliding speed. This time however, you should continue holding the left analog stick in the direction you're travelling, and drop the spherical bomb and immediately tap ZR to enter bullet time. The sooner you enter bullet time after dropping the bomb the better, as you're still gliding forwards, so even doing it immediately the bomb will still be at least a couple of in-game meters behind you. As a guide it should still be comfortably on screen, but a lot closer to the edge of the screen than it is to Link. Press up on the D-pad as soon as you enter bullet time and switch to the cube bomb and drop it. Don't detonate it straight away, you need to watch their relative positions. Most of the time, the spherical bomb will slowly drop as the cube appears to rise. When there's a straight line from the sphere to the cube to the small of Link's back, detonate the spherical bomb and away you go. For both of these, don't forget to try and stick to the cardinal directions for the most reliable launches, and stock up on stamina overloading foods to ensure you can stay airborne for as long as you want. And with all that in mind, get practicing. It won't be long until you're having a literal blast chaining together airborne bomb impact launches and travelling all over Hyrule. The bomb impact launch completely reinvented Breath of the Wild for me, so I hope this guide has been helpful and I hope you have a stack of fun with the technique. Be sure to also check out my 6 reasons Breath of the Wild is still riveting in 2020 video and the Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity trailer. And for everything else, stick with IGN.